And so at this time, amen, without any further, amen, going any further along, amen, we're going to turn this service over into the hands of Pastor Ernesto Martinez. Let's give God a hand clap as he comes at this time. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord Almighty. Praise God. How many know that God is good? That, that sounds like real weak this afternoon. Did you eat your Wheaties this morning? It seems like you didn't, but is God good? Okay, now, now we got we got to do that better. There, there's only a couple of people here, and, and so now I'm gonna talk to these people because there, there's no one like here. Okay, is God good? Oh, okay, that's that's a little better. And all the time, yes, God is all good. Come on, don't let me start here now. The, it reminds me of the days. Amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor K. Amen. Amen. We're just thankful for God is good and worthy to be praised. Amen. It's been uh, four decades. He's just putting it lightly. So he won't show his age, right? Because it's been more than 40 years that we were, we, that's right, that's right, brother. You, I, I like this guy. I like this guy. Amen. Praise the Lord that we are still fighting the good fight. Amen. That we're still pressing on towards, amen, to the light of, cre of Christ. Amen. Amen. And we've been doing this for a minute. Uh, amen. We're not just new jacks. We've been doing this for a minute. Uh, amen. Praise God. And we just thank God for what he's done, what he's doing, and what he's about to do. Amen. Somebody didn't hear that. Somebody didn't receive that. Somebody didn't say, listen, I, I, I'm grabbing that prophetic word in my spirit. Listen, I'm glad for what God has done, what he's doing, and what he's about to do. Somebody got it. Somebody got it. Some people are waiting. Somebody are waiting. Listen, God is saying, listen, I'm ready to pour a new thing in your life. Somebody's not getting that today. Somebody's not getting it today. Amen. Praise God. God is about to pour in something new. Just listen, it's about to happen right now. In the name of Jesus. Well, like uh, Pastor Kay or Pastor Kevin, uh, my brother from a different mother. If you don't know, he is salt and I'm pepper. Huh? No. Oh. oh, okay. I gotcha. That, that, that. There you go. There you go. I got a senior moment. Come on. Amen. Praise God. But we will always be called salt and pepper, and wherever we were at, uh, amen, we will be everywhere. Because there's no, there's no color. There's no color in Christ Jesus. See, see there's only, you, you don't understand this. There's, there's only one color here. Does, does somebody getting it? There's only one color here, and it's the blood of Jesus, and it's red. Oh, somebody, Shetaba. Woo! There's only one color, and the color is red, and we're washed by the blood of the Lamb. You need to understand that. Is there somebody to testify, testify this? Oh, listen, I, I come with a word from the Lord. Come on. Huh. Listen, there's only one color. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Listen, people out there are just trying to divide us. 
You, you need to understand this. There's, there's things that, there's forces out there that want to divide us. And amen, praise God, making this, this, this issue of sauce and all this. But listen, there's only one banner, and that's the banner of Jesus Christ. Do I got a church here today? Do I got a church here today? Come on, come on. There's no dividing lines. Come on, man. There's no political here. Come on, we got we to gotta serve one banner, and that's Jesus Christ. But that world's trying to divide us. That social media is trying to divide the preaching here. I don't want to go on. Amen. But I'm so thankful and honored and blessed. Uh, amen. That uh, Pastor Kevin, uh, amen, my brother, amen, that has allowed me to minister. I am grateful and blessed that I could be here to support him, support my family. I think I'm the furthest here. I come from Alexandria, Virginia. I'm about five minutes from the Pentagon. I'm about 15 minutes from Washington, D.C. Ten minutes, give or take, without Jesus or with Jesus. Uh, no, nobody got that. Uh, yeah, you, 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 you got that, right? With, with Jesus or without, you know, some of us, okay now, okay now. Amen. Praise the Lord. But um, 15, you know, it's about 10 minutes to Washington. This borough. But I still have a congregation. I'm still the lead pastor. Amen. No matter where two. Somebody needs to understand that where two or three are gathered in his name. Some people need multitudes. Some people need stages. Let me tell you, an orchestra leader has to turn his, some, some of you can get this. Some of the orchestra leaders have to turn their backs to what? To the orchestra. See, sometimes you need to turn your back. Amen. You, you, you don't need to hear the voices or the voice of, of who's speaking or who's talking. You just got to listen to God. You don't need a multitude. I could preach to one like I could preach to a thousand. Amen. I don't need a pulpit to preach. I just need Jesus. And everything else is the rest. Nothing else. Everything is the, is the icing on the cake. But I'm thankful. I'm Pastor Martinez or Pastor E. Uh, amen. From Elohim Evangelical Assembly. Just, let me just get this wrapped up out of the way. My, uh, some of my peoples are here. Can you please stand Elohim? Amen. Praise God. You want to stand? Amen. Okay, amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. He's my peeps also. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I, I, I just want to tell you that I, um, many may know, not know, but I, I, I lost, I didn't lose her, but God gained uh, my wife to heaven. Uh, in 2020 uh, from COVID uh, after 36, 37 years of marriage. Amen. Uh, I lost my mother-in-law that same year, but I lost my wife That's, that year. I lost my mother-in-law uh, that, that same year also. Uh, I lost my sister, my oldest sister in um, 2022. And I lost a dear uh, sister uh, in Christ that same year. And I lost my son this past year of 35 years. He was only 35 years old. You might judge me. You can judge my family or my kids. I don't care, but I need to tell all the young people. I need you to understand. It's not conclusive, but all the signs are there. And I don't want to, you know, it's kind of hard to say these things. But uh, he was struggling with drug abuse. He was struggling with drug abuse. And 
they found them dead in her apartment where there was all paraphernalia and many things and the detective uh, spoke but two weeks earlier this is how God is good he called he called my grandson I call him my grandson because my spiritual daughter is here amen for Veronica sister V we call her her son he called him and he gave his life to Christ Don't mess around with drugs. You might not have the same opportunity as my son. I'm still mourning. It's still a struggle. But I know that I'll see him again. And I have to tell this about because there's people out there playing with this. Laced with fentanyl. People dying. Young kids are dying. You go from you go from hash. Is that what it's called now? Reefer. I used to call reefer my time. Hash. Marijuana. Whatever. And then you go to something group. Because the highness is not enough. You get adapted. Your body gets adapted. And you start like getting you want something more because that's what the addiction does Satan wants to destroy your life and I come to tell you that I don't want you to die without salvation Jesus is real and Satan is also real he only comes to destroy kill a man and rob every man do for a night but joy cometh in the morning amen that's scripture man that's the bible that is the word amen and I'm thankful that my joy came I have joy in Christ and God gave me uh, someone that I could share and, and love and, and just you know it's not good for a man to be alone it's not good for a man to be alone <laughs> amen and I'm so so thankful and blessed can I say that again? Oh, come on. <laughs> but we have a word from the Lord. And our, our theme, uh, amen, of today, and I, I'm hoping I, I won't be long. I only probably preach like for about three hours. Uh, amen. Praise God. Amen. But, but our theme of today is crises produces transformation. Amen. Amen. Crisis produces transformation. Lord, Father God, your word says that where two or three are gathered in your name, there's liberty. There is peace. There is joy. There is love. Father God, where you are, oh my goodness, there's the completeness of everything. We rely and trust in you. We rely and trust only in you. Lord, because you are the giver of life. And we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One thing that I noticed was that I always try to look at Pastor uh, Kevin's uh, service on Sunday. Uh, his, his YouTube channel. And I, 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 correct me if I'm correct, L last week you were talking about transformation? Yeah. Is that correct? That was, a few weeks ago. That, yeah. Like two weeks ago. Okay, so I'm talking about that. I said, that was just confirmation. And I was like, okay, God. Okay, God. Because so, uh, I was going to ask him, well, Pastor, what are you preaching on? And sometimes pastors want you to continue a series, but God knows the series. Oh, he knows. oh come on. You didn't get that. Crises produces transformation. Heard in James chapter 1. I promise you not to be too long. James chapter 1 verse 4. 
that's going to be our main text, but, or we're, but we're going to talk about uh, Jacob. James chapter 1, verse 4, and the word is read in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Do we have it in the back? No? Okay. Uh, everybody has it? If you don't have a Bible, if somebody doesn't have a Bible, can you share with someone? I have a, a, a thing on my program. And I have a program. It's called Coffee with Pastor E on a Facebook. I'm on Facebook. I'm in YouTube. I'm in Instagram. I'm in um, I'm in um, Pinterest. I'm in uh, Zoom. I'm in I'm in Twitch for those for all those kids that love to play gaming. I'm in Twitch. I'm in uh, yes. Listen, everything that I could grab a hand in preaching the word of the Lord, because I don't do it for. St I, I know my girlfriend doesn't like this word, the stupid things, because there's some stupid things out there. Or ignorant things and some stuff that is not really that edifies. There's, there's a lot of junk out there. But I just thank God because sharing is caring and caring is sharing. And I say that in my program. Uh, amen. Praise God because it's so good to share. Because you've been blessed by the blesser to bless someone. Somebody didn't get. Did somebody get that? I, I, got, I got some people that are too quiet here. Oh, oh, oh you're listening. I got you. I got you. I am blessed for the blessor to bless someone. Can, can you touch your neighbor and say, I'm blessed by the blessor to bless someone. Oh, come on, come on. You need to be shouting out says, oh my goodness, I'm blessed. I'm blessed by the blessor. Who's the blessor? God is your blesser. To bless someone. You were, you were put in this earth to bless someone. You, it's okay. Amen. Praise God. You were blessed. You were blessed by His, by Him, to bless this world, because you are the salt of the world. If the salt leaves, if the salt there's nothing to be seasoned, listen, this world will be unseasoned. You are the sazón. Come on, Spanish. Come on, tú eres el sazón, tú eres el adobo. You know what adobo? You know, Pastor Pastor Kevin talks about adobo. Yeah, he, right, right, you're talking about the adobo? Tu sabe? Ella? Yeah, Sason Goya. Amen, praise God. You need to be seasoned. Amen, praise God. Because this earth will be nothing with the church, without the church. You didn't get that. You're not, you're not privileged people. You're not a royal. Okay, now, let me, let me go here. Let's go. Have this perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Mm. Genesis chapter 32. Verse 22. And he arose that night. And he arose that night. And took his two wives. And his two female servants. And his 11 sons. And crossed over. Say cross over. The ford of Jabbok. Mm. I want you to under. I want you to keep in note that 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 name there because it's very significant he took them sent them over the brook and sent over what he had i need you to say sent over say say come on repeat that sent over come on come on then jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day now when he saw that he did not prevail against him he touched the socket of his hip and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of wacko out of place out of joint 
as he wrestled. Then here you are wrestling. You think you're WWE and you're wrestling with your inner. He wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Crosses produces transformation. Prices produces, listen, most of the time, we all hate. No, no, we all love crises. We all hate the crises. And usually a crisis is crushing and physically. It's not emotionally, amen, exhausting. And the scriptures are clear that while I may desire to run from a crisis, amen, praise God, like a six-year-old. How many are six years old here? Any six-year-olds? They don't love broccoli. They run from broccoli. They run from spinach. Oh, mom, don't give me that spinach. But as a servant of Christ, crises in our lives and ministry often cannot be avoided. Say you cannot avoid your crises today. Come on, repeat that. I cannot avoid my crises. Amen. Praise God. Because many are the afflictions of the righteous. How many are righteous here today? Is that, is that a name too? Is that a word too big for you? So, some of you are sh struggling with that. See, I, so, some time ago I was, I was working with the Jewish community. I was like, what? I, I wanted to open the, the, the floor like, yo, that, that word is too. But then I understood that righteous is not on my own. It's through the blood of Jesus. You, see, you got an identity. Could I take off my jacket? You got an identity. I don't need a voice. My girlfriend says, you got a loud mouth. He says, now you know. Oh, my goodness. Praise God. Amen. I don't need a mic. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have an identity crisis today. We don't know who we are. Amen. Praise God. In our churches. We don't know that we are servants of the Lord. That we are righteous through the blood of Jesus. You need to understand that God, God made a covenant. You, you, and ever. Some people are not getting this today. You, listen, you, 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 God, God made an everlasting covenant. An unconditional, unbreakable, unrevocable Oh my goodness, my goodness, the promise of God. See, he promised Abraham and he also promised us. Amen, praise God. Amen, he promised us that we are righteous through the blood of Jesus. We are righteous through the blood of Jesus. So no one, somebody loves crisis. Nobody loves crisis. But it's an unavoidable. We cannot avoid it. But the good news is, the good news is that uh, often, uh, amen, and praise God, that uh, the good news is that when responding rightly to crises, they can actually be a spiritual, emotionally, and even physically good for us. Nevertheless, I still don't like crises. But they have to come. We, we, we have to endure. We must continue to persevere. The crises and problems are like, so what is crisis? What, what is that word? That word is, is catastrophe, change. Some people don't like this word, mess. 
I'm a mess. How many of us have said that? I'm a mess. See, when, when catastrophe hits, when crisis hits in, in our lives, that, that we're a mess. We're unbearable. But God converts his mess to a blessed situation. So what is transformation? Transformation is a, a renewal. It's a shift. He shifts us from gears. And when, if you don't know, who, who knows about cars? A, a, when you shift a car, standard. Now you knew Jackson know what standard is. Stick shift. It's, it's a violent, it's not, it's not easy. It's a violent shift. And even though it might be, it might be smooth, but it's still violent. Huh? And, and we don't, we, we don't let, listen, a transformation is a shift that we must do in Christ. And we don't like these things, but it must come to pass. We must go through the crises. I don't like it. Amen. I don't like crisis. In my flesh, I'd rather be comfortable. Some of you like to be comfortable in that old chair, in that rocking chair. Yeah, yeah. Amen. But there's a news flash. Hello, wake up and smell the coffee. Beep, 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 beep. You probably already know that. All of us will face crises on a regular basis. We face them in our finances, in our occupation, in our family, in our marriage, our church. That's why I say church. That's why. Yes. Church life and health. It is, in, in the oldest book of the Bible, we look at Job. Note that man is born to... Listen, you, let, let's go to that scripture. Let's go to Job chapter 5, verse 7. We're going we're to have a teaching moment, right? Let's go to Job. Sometimes the, the teaching comes out of me. Can somebody read it? Yeah, Job chapter 1. Job chapter 5. I'm sorry. Verse 7. It says, Yet man is born to trouble. What? Like, I never read that. <laughs> like, what are you talking about, pastor? Hey, Amen. My goodness. Praise the Lord. Yet man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upward. What are you talking about, Pastor? Like, there's another verse that says, when the fire sparks. See, when fire sparks, it goes up. Just like that, that's how we're in trouble. And he, listen, sometimes we can get ourselves in trouble, and sometimes we fall into trouble. Sometimes we're not looking for trouble, but trouble comes looking. Jacob was a thief. Could I be blunt? His name means thief. If you didn't know that. Jacob was a thief. That's his name. And he did what he did. Jacob was a wrestler. And he was wrestling with God. He wrestled with relationships. He, relation, he, he wrestled with so many things. With his brother, with Laban. He wrestled with his father-in-law. There were so many moments in his life. But God had a purpose. Many of us have said, Pastor, I'm not a thief. You might not be called Jacob. <laughs> you might not be a thief. But you're wrestling with your inside. You're wrestling. There's a crisis that's happening in your life. Jacob, amen, praise God, 
was wrestling with God. He had to fight his blessing. Amen. He had to fight for his blessing. Praise God. The night that, amen, praise God, he, he left. He, God, God took him. He says, listen, go cross over. See, sometimes we need to cross over to the ford, to the ford of, if I'm saying it correct, Job Buck or Job Bak, which means the root of the meaning means empty itself. I told you to keep that little it right here. Keep it, keep it here. For us to cross over, we need to empty ourselves. For us to see the glory of God, we need to empty ourselves. He took them and sent them over the brook. Amen, praise God. And then he was left alone. See, God empties us then to leave us alone. He empties us first and then we must be left alone. When we wrestle, when we wrestle with crises in our lives, let it be emotionally, let it be spiritually, let it be... Now this is the key. Pastor... E, I understand that there are crises that come and go. But let me let you know that is how you confront it, how you act upon it, how you, amen, conduct yourself. Amen, praise God. Hallelujah. Is the, the, the results will be catastrophic or it will be victorious. It might be a disastrous. But the way God wants us is to be transformed from our crises. Crisis produces what? Transformation. It brings a change. Listen, if, if somebody told you about the gospel and told you, and told you about roses... That you're not going to have any strife. That you're going to be all pretty and looking good. Praise God. And then nothing's going to happen to you. And listen, that's, that's all I. I got something else to tell you. No, pastor, they told me, oh, that Christ is the, that Christ is the answer. But he also said, if you want to follow me. If you want to be my disciple. You must take, some of you, oh, I want to be a disciple of God, but nobody wants to take the. You know, one, one man went up to the heaven and uh, talking with the angel and the angel was talking with him and he says, uh, uh, he says, listen man, this cross that I bear, I, I don't want it anymore, I don't want it anymore. I don't put this out. Because I'm very uh, dramatic. My kids told me I'm dramatic. And, 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 and he says, listen, I, this cross, I can't bear it anymore. Oh, please, I, I want to. And he saw all these crosses all around in heaven. He says, oh, man, you know, could I exchange it? He says, sure, you can exchange it. Why not? He goes and he's, he's, he picks up the, nah, this doesn't fit right. Then he goes to the other cross. He says, man, this cross doesn't, nah, man, it's too good. I don't know, but, you know. And then he takes this other cross. He says, oh, my goodness, don't look at your wife now. He said that she's a cross now. No, <laughs> amen, but oh, this cross, oh my goodness. And he said, no, no, he says, well, try, try this one. He says, oh my goodness, this, this fits good. Yeah, yeah. He says, that's the cross that you always have. <laughs> Some of you are looking at the other cross of somebody else. Some of you are looking at the other person's cross. It says, oh my goodness, that, that, that brother, that, that pastor, oh my goodness, he, oh my goodness, oh, I want to be up there. I want to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. I want to put in the foots. 
you know, I want to follow in the foot, you know, the shoes. I, I love the, uh, uh, Priscilla Schreier, she says, you know, we all, we all want to be in the shoes, you know, you know explaining the, the armor uh, of God, right? The, the shoes of peace, right? Right? You remember that? Somebody knows about the shoes of peace? My goodness. Amen. And, and the shoes of peace, you, you got to wear them. It's like, your, like when we were children, right, KJ? When you were a child, you would try to use your father's shoes, and you would try to balance and fall, right? Right? Amen? And that's all where God wants you to be in his shoes. God wants you to be in his in this father's shoes. See, it's not your peace. You're not looking for your own peace. You're looking for the peace that surpasses all understanding. Listen, you need to understand that. Amen? Praise God. Crisis has to come. It will catapult you. It will shift you to the right direction. You need to understand that the right direction. He, you see, when you're Paul, is it Paul Bowler? You know, that person in the uh, Olympics? What do you call it? Oh, Paul, Paul Bowler. Yeah, yeah, he's running and he has to flip it and go over the what? The pole. Yeah. The pole. Your trial, your tribulation, your crisis, your catastrophe is what going to transform you to the woman and the man that God has always designed you for to be. You need to understand that God's purpose has to be fulfilled in your life. I need you to play some here. Then. Amen. Praise God. God has to fulfill. You're not getting this, but it's okay. Amen. God wants you to fulfill his purpose in you. I got a, I got, a, I got something. I don't know if you ever saw, if you ever saw a shot fire, the program, a couple of years ago. Don't call me old. It was just recently. <laughs> shots fire. And and I recall this saying. And please keep it. We were born bad. We're just being taught to be good. Crisis produces transformation. You cannot be transformed if there's no problem. Listen, if you're thinking that you're not going to go through the fire, But you won't burn. Thank you, Lord. you might go through the waters, but you won't. You won't drown. Amen. Scripture, come on. That's Just right. paraphrasing. <laughs> come on, Isaiah. That's right. That's right. Now you're Isaiah. <laughs> but you, it, you have to go through the trials for that transformation to happen in your life. See, Jacob went through this stage. He had to go through what he had to go. And, 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 he, and he wrestled with the angel of God. Some say it was God himself. Some say it was Jesus. Listen, whatever it is, he wrestled. And he wrestled with God. And he got his blessing. Amen. He met up. See, that, that was a God moment. That was a God moment. Jacob had the struggle of his life. He who has once grasped his, his brother's heel now clungs to the, to the body form of the living God. Some believe that the man who wrestled Jacob was Jesus Christ. Others believe the man was the angel of God. In any case, Jacob wrestled with the manifestation of God. And because God's mercy, he survived. He survived. 
Don't worry about it. That doesn't bother me. He survived. He survived. And you will prevail. You will survive. Because God does not give us more than what we can bear. Than what we can handle. Than what we can take. That's why you must take your cross. And your own cross. Don't look at other people. Don't look at other people's cross. Your journey is your journey. Your blessing is your blessing. Or do you want him to get your blessing? No way. No way. I want my blessing. And Jacob fought for his blessing. He wrestled. Amen. Praise God. He wrestled. Praise God. And he survived. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mm -mm -mm. In this in this area, we, we see that Jacob places was not doing something. He was not praying or he was wrestling with God. He was wanting his blessing. And his name was changed. Because when you're transformed, God changes your perspective. God changes everything in you. Because you are allowing God to change your life. The shift is there. He's shifting your life. Hold on. Don't worry. Trouble. You're born into trouble. Yet Christ is going to deliver you. God is going to guide you. God is going to direct your path. And he changed his name from Jacob. Because no longer you are a thief. Amen. Praise God. No longer. Amen. Praise God. You're seen. Amen. As, as this person. As many people has labored you. Discounted you. Oh, now I'm talking to some people here today. Your self-esteem. and your, they, they labored you like a, a nobody. Like nothing. Praise God. Hallelujah. They, they, they look at you. Amen. Praise God that you're not worth anything. Oh. He changed the name from Jacob. No longer you are called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have what? Prevailed. He prevailed. Crises produces transformation. I cannot be transformed if I'm not in crises. Because in the heat of the situation, we abandon ship. In the heat of the situation, in the middle of the fire of the crises, the first thing is, I want to give up. Come on, how many, we all say that. I want to give up. I want to give up. I, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I, the, the, first, the first thing that we do is, is we want to, uh, um, I'm going to say in Spanish, it doesn't say in English. Queremos ganchar lo cual I want to, we want to um, hang up the gloves. Thank you, sis. Hang up the, the gloves. We want to be like Durant. No mas. <laughs> and Sugar Ray did a number on him. He, he gave up. He gave up. But you are a warrior. You are a warrior. You can't give up on the signs of, of fire. You cannot give up at, at the moment of, of the stress. You cannot give up. I, I recall in my marriage, uh, my marriage with my late wife, uh, 10 years in my marriage, I give it. Uh, divorce was, was pronounced. The separation, it was a mess. It was catastrophe. 
Oh, somebody got his talking. Shots fire. <laughs> and I said, oh, man. But this is what you do. You start thinking about God. I said, God, no, no. This can't happen. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight for my marriage. I'm going to fight. I'm going to look for, for resources. Of course, the resource is God. Absolutely. But you got men and women that that will will bless you with, with counseling. Yes. That will guide you. There are men and women that will lead you, that will help you. Don't don't say that you can't you get so the pride of a man or a woman is not asking for help. Oh come on, brother, go ahead now. That's right. That's right, my brother. Amen. I, I recall uh, uh, I went to my spiritual mom. I call her my spiritual mom now. And, and I was blessed. She led me and my wife to some counseling session and help. Don't be prideful for help. There are people out here that have gone through the same situation. Why do we come here? Do, do we come to the house of God just to look pretty? Just to see for your brother and sister? To look on. No, no, you don't come for that. For modeling. No, you don't come for that. No, you, you, you come because each and every one of us have gone through it. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. If I, it, listen, if I could talk, listen, there are people here that, that have gone through drug abuse. People that come from the streets. Even touch prostitution. People that come, listen, and I'm not trying to shout you out, and I'm not trying to, that you've done some things in this world that you're probably ashamed of. But you made it through. You were almost shot. I don't know, man. I don't know. You should have been dead 10 years ago. Mm. But you're still in Jacob. And God wants to transform you into Israel. Your crisis is a blessing. Your crisis is a blessing. Your catastrophe is a blessing. See, don't take it like the wrong, like God is picking on me. Oh, we get into this picky, pity party. Oh, God. Listen, I've been there, done that. Listen, don't, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. I've been there. I've done that. Because I'm not ashamed to say. It. I've done some things. I'm not, I'm, listen, I, I could tell you. But I'm still blessed. I went through it. And I've come out. I'm still standing. Some people want to just give up. Some of you want to give up today. Some of you says, God, if you don't talk to me today, I'm leaving. If you don't talk to me today, I'm leaving. I give up. I don't want to fight anymore. I'm out the game. Some of you have said, listen, I, 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 I just don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm lost. I'm so deep in my sin. I'm ashamed. But you're here. I'm here. 
I'm still standing. <laughs> Jacob could have gave up. Am I correct? Jacob could have like kept on stealing, kept on doing whatever he needed to do. Keep on leading his own way. But God saw him. See, God saw you. God saw you in the cross. God saw you in the cross. He looked right at you. I need you to understand that the cross saw you. I need you to understand that the cross saw you. His eyes were placed on you. I need you to understand. to your situation. Some of you says, man, Pastor, you, I'm here and, you know, I just did something out there in the street. Did it last night. Did it before you came to church. Feel that you have no hope. Some of us feel like hypocrites in the chair and we're wrestling, we're wrestling and we're fighting, we're wrestling and, and we're fighting. I need you to close your eyes please. You're wrestling right now. And you're feeling that you're so far, far away when Christ is right next to you with his open arms. Some of you are wrestling. Some of you are in a crisis right now going through this moment of despair. Your trial does not define you. Your problems do not define you. It does, listen, your situation does not define you. It doesn't. Many of you are wrestling with that inside you. Today could be your deliverance. Today could be your breakthrough. Today you're, 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 you're fighting with your marriage to, to stay together. You're wrestling with your relationship. Some of you are wrestling with your relationship with God. Some of you are wrestling with, with, with like, I don't know what to do, Pastor E. God's mercy is here today. Christ is here. 
and he wants to deliver you he wants to do something in your life Christ is here don't don't stop don't stop don't stop don't he's here if you need prayer I, I want to pray for you today if you need Jesus if you need Christ if you want Christ to to come into your heart here's the answer he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me, he said. Jesus said that. Amen. Give me a minute, brother. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So why did he say that? Why, why can he say that? Because he died for your sins. He died for your sins. He died for you. He did it because he shed his blood on Calvary to give you life and life more abundantly. Only through Christ you can have joy peace and love he's the answer not, not, nothing in this world could, could, could respond nothing in this world could, could satisfy you nothing could satisfy you like Jesus can nothing could satisfy you nothing nothing could satisfy you like Jesus Christ is the answer Christ is the answer